All right, so for Chem 1211, this is hopefully a quick video just to go over the table associated with the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, or VSEPR for short. And so one of the things we look at is we can look at the steric number or the number of electron domains or electron groups. And we're always going to get that from the Lewis structure itself. And so we're looking at a central atom, and we're looking at how many things are around that. And for a steric number of two, the geometry, or the electron geometry, will always be linear. And an example of this would be CO2. or HCN. If you have three electron domains or three for the steric number then this is always going to be trigonal planar. And examples include BF3, nitrate, and formaldehyde. If you have four as your steric number or your electron domains, then that is always tetrahedral. This is the case for methane, or sulfate, or phosphate, or almost anything you can think of that has four atoms around it and no lone pairs. For five, this is going to be trigonal bipyramidal. And the classical example is phosphorus pentachloride. And for six, you're going to have octahedral. And this would be, the classic example is sulfur hexafluoride. Now within each of these steric numbers or numbers of electron domains, you could of course also have lone pairs. So if you have a steric number of two and you happen to have no lone pairs, then you're still linear. And if you do have a lone pair, then you are still linear, but only because that's the only shape that two atoms can have. If you look at a steric number of three, then it's possible that you have one lone pair. And if you have one lone pair with a steric number of three, then instead of seeing this atom that would be on the top of that trigonal planar, you only see these three atoms, which gives us that bent shape. If you are looking at two lone pairs from trigonal planar, then again, you only see those two atoms because you can't really see those two lone pairs when you're looking for atoms. And so again, we would be back to linear for the shape. Under tetrahedral, we have the ability to have up to three lone pairs and still have a tetrahedral electron geometry. And so under tetrahedral, if you have one electron pair, one lone pair rather, and a steric number of four, then instead of having that tetrahedral shape with the electrons, you actually just see 
the lower part of this and so it looks like it is trigonal pyramidal not trigonal bipyramidal just trigonal pyramidal with two lone pairs again we have the same kind of thing going on but we see these atoms kind of like with the trigonal planar and we don't see these atoms because those are where the lone pairs are and so the shape that you can see is bent and again with three lone pairs we would be back to a linear structure now it might be good here to give a few examples of some of these um, a steric number of two where there's one lone pair this might be the nitrogen in the HCN whereas the two with no lone pairs is the carbon so of course if you're just looking at two atoms connected to each other that's always going to make a straight line and that's going to be the case down here and down here as well now trigonal planar that happens to be bent we've already seen a few examples of that we've seen that for nitrite and we've seen that for so2 the um, two that still gives you the linear structure that a good example would be the oxygen on carbon dioxide where there are two lone pairs and it's still attached to the carbon so again those two atoms are always going to give you that linear shape trigonal pyramidal a good example is ammonia and bent a good example is water under trigonal by pyramidal now we can consider one lone pair that lone pair is going to have to go to the equator so we're always going to see that lone pair somewhere around the equator so with the atoms that are left around the central atom if you turn that the right way then you would see a seesaw shape two lone pairs again both are going to have to go to around the equator and that's going to leave a t-shape where the lone pairs don't show up as part of the molecular shape and three lone pairs would again go all around the equator which i'm going to turn the molecule for this one and so again that would be linear for examples for seesaw a good example would be sulfur tetrafluoride for t-shaped a good example would be iodine trichloride and for linear a good example would be the triiodide ion finally for octahedral we could have one lone pair which would leave us with the square base with four atoms around there and one atom pointing straight up and this lone pair on the bottom would not, again not be very visible within the atoms and so this would give us square pyramidal Two lone pairs would like to go as far apart as possible from each other, but it's also possible that they could go together around the equator. It is possible. You might have something that would direct them that way. So in this case, we don't see the top or the bottom atoms because those are where the lone pairs are around the center and so square planar
And then with three, there's actually two possibilities. One would have these around the equator so that they all lie in the same plane. And that plane passes through the molecule. So you see three atoms in a plane. And the other possibility would be to have all three of these along the same face of the molecule. such that the three atoms that are left behind sort of look like they form a trigonal pyramidal kind of structure that's going to have 90 degrees there between all of the bonds. Some examples of these for square planar could be XEF5 minus XEF4 or even the heme group from hemoglobin. And for the three lone pairs, you could have a tungsten tris-carbonyl anion. Again, we're not going to worry about these three lone pairs in this class or really anything above six for the steric number, although those do exist. So again, you may want to go ahead and, if you haven't already, draw all of these Lewis structures so that you can see these shapes. The bond angles in linear are 180 degrees. In trigonal planar, they are 120. In tetrahedral, they are 109.5. In trigonal bipyramidal, depending on where you're looking, if you're looking on the side here, you might have a 90 degree angle. If you're looking around the equator, I'm trying to point at the back side there, then you would have 120 degrees. And in octahedral, everything is at 90 degrees. And then these bond angles will shift a little bit depending on where the lone pairs are, since a lone pair is going to have slightly stronger repulsive forces than a single bond or a double bond on its own would have.